<clears throat> hey gang, it's JC, and this is the Daily Dose for Friday, October 14th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We have great television archives up at the top of the page. We'll talk about the Cardinals here in just a couple of seconds. We have our eye candy feature along the bottom, and our rock and roll poll question from yesterday. What was the deal the other night with all the empty seats at Bush Stadium? They have the series returning to St. Louis, all this excitement. And there's like two, 3,000 empty seats. What do you think the reason was? Number one answer at 45%, the combination of high ticket prices and a bad economy. Number two answer, the threat of bad weather at 27%. 21% said sporting events are now more enjoyable at home on big screen high def TVs. 4% said the team hasn't produced the excitement level of years past. And only 4% of you said that fans right now are consumed by Rams fever. All right. How often is there a fight in your home about the amount of sports being watched on TV? A, hardly ever. B, once in a while. C, oh brother, don't even get me started. Those are your three choices. Please answer in the corner. We'll have a running total for you this afternoon. Ah, the Big 550 KTRS. Trish and I will be live from Hooters again and get you ready for Cardinal Baseball. And then I'll be back on from 6 until 7 live from Hooters right across from Keener Plaza. Stop by, have a beer, go face down and a plate of wings or anything else that you can get your face down in. And, uh, and then we wait and then we see. Yeah, then we wait and then we see. Uh, so the Brewers refuse to follow the script, I see. Yeah, there was just too much of that lefty pitcher last night. You know, Randy Wolf is a good pitcher. And uh, you buzz one in at 86 miles an hour and then throw a 67 mile an hour curveball and then buzz one outside at 89 miles an hour again on the corner and then throw a 67 mile an hour curveball. I mean, these guys were so off balance last night. Wolf just had a great night. I, I hesitate to say that he had a night as good as Chris Carpenter in Philadelphia last week, but he had a pretty darn good night. The too much Randy Wolf. That's the story of the whole game. Everybody's focusing on Ryan Terrio, who made a spectacular play. I tweeted yesterday, you can follow me on Twitter at STLJC Corcoran. That's STLJC Corcoran. I said, Terrio and I play look like if you ever throw a ball of yarn at a cat, and the cat just goes Rawr! and just seems to snag it. And people forgot about that. Now they focus on the air. It was a tough choice, or a tough chance, rather. And, and uh, that's not why we lost the game. We lost the game because we didn't hit Randy Wolf. So enough of that. Uh, let's see. What else here? Oh, Craig Sager. I spent a little time out on the field yesterday. The uh, sideline reporter uh, for TBS is a nice guy. We have a mutual friend and everything like that. He was shopping at Plaza Frontenac yesterday because I said to him, I said, Craig, you know, these clothes you wear, this is the guy who wears the suits that look like they're made out of lasers. Okay, so I said, this is that stuff that just comes off the rack. Where do you get all this stuff? And he says, when I travel, doing sports coverage, I go to the, uh, I go seek this stuff out. And I said, did you find something today? He goes, yeah, I'll be wearing maroon tomorrow night. So that means tonight, when you watch the game, Friday night, Bush Stadium, look for a maroon, but it won't just be maroon. It's going to be like maroon with a battery pack in the back of the jacket. So you can uh, check that out, too. Let's see. I'm trying to remember anything else. Oh, I already saw the gold embossed um, 2011 World Series Baseball. Our buddy Bill Greenblatt, who shoots a lot of the pictures we use here on the Daily Dose, was showing me that. Saw Dennis Eckersley, who must have a tanning bed in his house. He's still got all his hair. He's tall. He's good looking. He's got that big mustache. He looks sort of like a porn star, if you want to know something, but a porn star from the 70s. But he's in the Hall of Fame, and so the joke's on me. Anyhow, that's the deal there, and uh, we're live at Hooters again. All right, uh, let's um, shift gears here and talk about what could be the end of Netflix. No kidding. I've been hearing rumblings about this for a long time, but Apple is negotiating with major movie studios right now, and that would allow people to buy movies on iTunes and show them on any of their Apple devices without having to save or transfer the file, okay? Studios could go directly to the consumer and not uh, exclusively through Netflix or any other third-party services. Now, technically, Apple would be your middleman, but it's pretty simple. Um, could be the end of movie theaters to it. I know... You know, most people say people will always want to go to a movie, and that may be the case, but it could put a... I mean, this could really revolutionize the way that we see movies, much more so than now. I mean, it's begun, but this could really, really seriously take off. The only real crink in the armor here is that um, HBO 
has existing deals with the movie studios. And they, got, they have what's called the HBO window. And that means that period of time from when the movie leaves the movie theater, and then there's that sort of like grace period, and then it shows on HBO for a couple of months, and then it goes to video. they got to work that out. But if they can work that out, that's going to be the end of Netflix, and it could be the beginning of the end for movie theaters. I don't know. I'm a little cool on that one because I hear people saying that all the time. It just really, really bothers me. It might just, that might be it. You know, I might know in my heart of hearts that the days are numbered for movie theaters, but just my love of the idea of the communal experience of going to a movie, although I've had more unpleasant than pleasant um, experiences in a movie theater recently. It's, I got to do something. And I had a guy who stunk so bad sitting in the row in front of us. We literally had to sit there with our jackets over our faces for the whole final two-thirds of Moneyball about three weeks ago. And then you get into the ridiculous prices of the food and the drinks. The food is no damn good for you. Some serious decisions, some serious issues facing movie theaters at some point. Can they reinvent themselves? Can they figure out some way to make that experience better? Can they completely rewrite the idea of going to the movies and make it into a, a completely different kind of experience? What, what would that experience be? Would you set up little rooms, little booths? You know, and have movies show that way. Is that then the same as going to a movie theater? And if so, what would be the point if you could do that in your own home? See, it gets her to a really, really complicated area. We will have that conversation on the air very soon, I am sure, on the Big 550 KTRS. We're on from noon to 3 every day with Trish Gazelle. Bad news for Lindsay Lohan. They kicked her out of this women's shelter she was supposed to be doing her community service from. Also, her teeth are rotting, and that sounds about right. Whitney Houston went all diva, uh-uh-uh, on some plane the other day. A flight attendant had the audacity to tell her to put her seatbelt on, and Whitney went nuts. Dr. Conrad Murray's defense team, possibly, well, they're being accused of conducting unethical experiments on dogs, beagles with propofol, sleeping beagles, to try to prove their defense case in the Michael Jackson thing. Footloose, the remake. Ryan Seacrest's girlfriend, and they've sort of made it into like more like a country thing as opposed to pop, the way Kevin Bacon did it back in the 80s. Two words. Bad frickin' idea. I know that's three words. I improvised. Can you handle that? Saturday Night Live, Anna Ferris. I don't get the whole Anna Ferris thing. I really don't. Uh, she's hosting. All right, Sunday, you get the Rams and Packers at noon. What will that final score be? 59 to... Six. 59 6 will be my final score. So that'll be at noon. Is this is Sunday gonna be the Wisconsin Day of Revenge? Because then the Cardinals play Milwaukee up there at Miller Park, and that looks like that's gonna be a three o'clock start. Speaking of Divas, how about Janet Jackson? Somebody got a hold of her tour contract rider. A couple of things. Uh, the rider forbids anyone from making jokes about her family. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some of the stuff Janet wants in her dressing room. Follow along. White flowers. Let me read from this. Janet prefers cute, I'm sorry, cut white tulips, but if those aren't available, she's willing to accept white gardenias or white roses. If that is not possible, Janet will make do with an arrangement featuring, quote, a variety of white nicely put together. Candles. Janet demands unscented candles that are three to four inches in diameter, and scented uh, candles that smell like red currant. Finally, food and beverages. Janet doesn't need alcoholic beverages, but she does want Gatorade, and Gatorade is misspelled. <sighs> Some skydiver tries to have sex while he's skydiving and videotape it. The authorities were going to arrest him. They realized they didn't do anything wrong. There's no statute. Since nobody witnessed the nudity or the sex act in the middle of the sky, there were no victims. There's no case. Who knew? Great news, my lazy friends. You don't have to scrub any of the junk off your plates or soak your plates or do any sort of pre-wash before you put them in the dishwasher. As a matter of fact, if you do that, you eliminate the food particles that detergent clings to, and you, act you could actually end up with dishes that are less clean than if you put them in dirtier than we've all been putting them in. Plus, it wastes 20 gallons of water unnecessarily if you pre-wash or pre-soak your dishes. And we do that here, so we're going to stop. This weekend, NASCAR fans at the Charlotte Motor Speedway can enjoy a brand new piece of American gluttony. 
Concession stands are going to be selling a funnel cake covered in chocolate syrup and crumpled bacon. It checks in at 1,300 calories, 77 grams of fat. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. Study in Minnesota shows that half of all crashes involving police cars happened because the officer was distracted by all the technology in the car. We just had that situation. Those two young women killed in O'Fallon, Illinois, a couple of years ago. All right, Sammy Hagar turned 64 yesterday. To celebrate, he released a new song called These Punks Are Speeding, They're Going 55. Thousands of entitled, white, jobless hippies are gathering in U.S. cities across America today. And I'm not talking about the Occupy protests. The new iPhone is available in Apple stores from coast to coast. New research suggests great sex can cause temporary amnesia. Well, Tiger Woods forgot how to play golf. And presidential candidate Rick Perry says he's never used illegal drugs. However, he admitted his hair is on steroids. All right. Happy birthday to Tim McCarver, who we hope will be here for the World Series next year. He is 70 years old today. Sort of looks like Huey Lewis is dead. And great shot, two great shots. As a matter of fact, I threw out the first pitch at Bush Stadium two years ago. Jason Mott was there. Got a great picture. Senior Smoke. Senior Smoke. I'm telling you, this guy. 99. Not 99, 99, but 99. All right. JC's Rock and Roll poll question. How much fighting goes on in your house about the amount of sports? That's not. See, I wrote it that way so then the men could complain about their women complaining about them and the women could complain about their men. So both sides can participate in this. Hardly ever once in a while or, oh, brother, don't get me started. We're live at Hooters today from noon to 3. And again, from 6 until 7 tonight across from Keener Plaza. And let's see where this mess is on Monday. Still, you know, Sunday would be Game 6. It is going to be Game 6. And then, if necessary, there'd be a decisive Game 7 in Milwaukee on 7. Cardinals better win tonight because I don't, I, don't, I don't think you can count on the Cardinals winning 2 at Miller Park. You are really asking for trouble. You better win tonight. Go get them. In the meantime, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Friday, October 14, 2011. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Follow me on Twitter at STLJC Corcoran or on our Facebook page, The Showgram with JC Corcoran. And every day on the Big 550 KTRS from noon till 3. That's it. We've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.